Welcome, everyone. I'm Jesse Burst. I'm your host today. I'm with Smart Grid News. Welcome to our webinar series, Lessons from the Real World. We're very pleased to be able to bring you this important topic about infrastructure protection. It's so important. It's so encompassing. It's so uh, easy to overlook a vulnerability. It's so dangerous if you do. So it requires a very thoughtful approach. So we're real happy that we've recruited a couple of the country's top experts to help guide us through that process. Now, uh, I'll introduce each of our speakers in more detail when it's their turn to speak. But very quickly, we're joined first by Eric Trapp, who's the Global Smart Grid Security Lead at Accenture. Eric, welcome, and thanks for joining us. Hi, Jesse. Thanks very much. It's good to be here with you and Rob. And also with us, Rob Humphrey, the Lead IT Security Consultant with Duke Energy. Uh, Rob, thanks for coming by. Uh, thanks, Jesse, for having me. So it's also a good time for me to say thank you to Accenture for helping make it possible for us to gather today and to Duke Energy and Rob for taking the time to share their experiences with their colleagues. So let's get started here. And just quickly, as uh, explained to me by our experts, here's the four key principles to um, infrastructure protection, defense in depth, standardization, governance, and education. This is what it takes to create a, a real complete security blanket, as I sometimes call it. And a key point is that uh, this applies not just to new gear, but also to legacy equipment. And we'll get into that and how that works today during the webinar. And it can often be the legacy equipment that, that causes some of the worst problems. So these are the two areas that we're going to cover today with the help of our guests. And let me bring up with our first guest today right now. As mentioned, Eric is the North America lead for the security practice. He's led many important IT projects and initiatives, including an infrastructure transformation for one of America's largest gas and electric utilities. He's an acknowledged authority in the field. Eric, would you uh, get us started? Right, again, thanks very much, Jesse, and it's good to, good to be here. So as you had um, highlighted, there's four key principles uh, that are necessary to establish a secure, reliable, and sustainable smart grid ecosystem. Um, and I'll briefly cover those before we go into a little deeper dive on the top two. So defense in depth is a term that is common in the information security or cybersecurity world and focuses on the architecture, tools, and technologies to prevent, detect, defend, and recover from adverse events. In standardization, well, we talk here about pushing to rationalize thoroughly vetted technologies. As you're likely aware, there's new market entrants in smart grid. There, there's also very established companies um, that you know, provide some capability or tool set or technology for smart grid. But the, the thing is there's just multiple new vendors with different metering systems, different security mechanisms. And I think there really needs to be a push for greater standardization amongst the technologies in order to enjoy a, a secure and robust smart grid ecosystem. But secondly, there's also a multitude of you know, regulations, legislation, and industry guidance around how to secure the smart grid. And I think that we're going to need to see some standardization and rationalization there. And we'll talk a little bit more about those two areas later. On governance, it's important to ensure an ongoing, relevant, and appropriate security posture. It's just like the safety culture in the utility industry, in order to ensure that the security mechanisms and postures that you've established are sustainable, it requires an organized governance uh, program in order to do that. And then finally is education. And again, just like the, you know, the safety culture um, that I previously mentioned, I think ensuring that your employees understand what their responsibilities are for protecting utility assets, customer information, employee information is critical, and a solid training and awareness program can do this. So a little bit more on defense in depth. One of the things that we promote in establishing an overall security program for a smart grid, um, and by smart grid, I mean that in the broadest sense, so not only you know, smart grid, but also smart meter as well, or advanced metering infrastructure, but is to establish security as part of the system development life cycle from the very beginning and to carry it out through the end. And that begins with an overall security architecture that's designed end-to-end -end and leverages defense in-depth technologies. Now, besides the architecture itself, 
It's important to, you know, understand how throughout this system development life cycle that you plan to continue to validate that the architecture and mechanisms and processes you've defined are performing the roles and jobs that you've expected them in order to attain the security posture you desire. We're going to be seeing unprecedented connectivity in, in the future with smart meter and smart grid. And as a result, this becomes even you know, more important to ensure that you have an ongoing risk assessment capability. And this is something that Rob is going to expand on a bit later as well. Um, just like uh, having unprecedented connectivity, in order to get your consumers and consumers comfortable with interacting with the utility in different ways through web portals and things like that, you're going to need to show them that you've got a secure mechanism to protect their confidential information. So identity and access management assumes even greater importance as you, you know, expand your network to potentially millions of end users. It's also important to set up a proactive um, security mechanism where you're constantly gathering intelligence about things that are going on in the cyber world that could potentially have an adverse impact on your organization so that you can proactively address those with the security mechanisms and processes you put in place. And then finally, enhanced uh, situational awareness is, is necessary and it's necessary to also identify real-time network security performance indicators. And by situational awareness, what I mean is having the systems and uh, monitoring analytics in place that allow you to understand the current state from a security standpoint of your security system. So Jesse had mentioned, you know, a blanketing of security. And so what we're depicting here is just an overall security architecture at a high level that looks at the various mechanisms to put in place uh, to protect the smart grid. And when I think about the security architecture, I break it up simply into three different areas, endpoint devices, network transport, and then the operational or administrative systems that are necessary to operate the, the overall smart grid or smart meter implementation. And as I mentioned before, there's a lot of new entrants, particularly in the endpoint device area, whether you're dealing with in-home displays, home area networks, new metering technologies, sensor telemetry out in the grid. These are areas where there's a lot of new market entrants, a lot of competing technologies, and with them comes competing security technologies that either are embedded or, or part of those endpoint devices. The network component is something that we have been securing, you know, for, for decades. Um, so there's many lessons to be learned from the telecommunications industry, for example, on securing whether it's wireless or mesh, and some of these are newer networking technologies, but wireless, broadband, traditional backhaul, um, what have you. And then finally, your operational administrative systems where things like application security, again, identity and access management, operating system level, database level, um, security become critical. So besides those three components, I also want to talk about the importance of, um, you know, it's not just the technology that needs to be in place in order to ensure the ongoing operation um, management and maintenance of the security mechanisms that you put in place. People and processes are, are critical as well. Just like I mentioned with education uh, earlier, it's important to, that the people that interact with the system understand what their responsibilities are for securing it. Same is true with processes and process maturity. And again, with the risk assessment approaches that we'll be touching on later, it's important to understand that the processes that you have established are effective in protecting the items that they're designed to protect. And then I'll bring in also um, just another example of something to hopefully think beyond the bounds of just the, you know, the system you see in front of you. But you also need to think through your supply chain. So as you are implementing new meter technology, for example, that may have some form of security or encryption embedded within the meter itself, it's important to establish a chain of custody from the manufacturer of that meter through to the potential warehousing of the meter to the distribution out to field units that are then deploying the meter and then throughout the entire uh, maintenance life cycle of that meter itself so that you can ensure the sanctity 
of any encryption mechanism that has been embedded within the technology. So just an example of thinking kind of beyond the traditional IT systems that we work to secure, but also making sure that the supply chain is secure as well. Aaron, could I just have, ask a quick question? What's necessary to achieve this end-to-end -end system in terms of the organizational process? Is this a cross-department committee? Is this a security czar? How do you get that blanket over the whole organization? Well, I think that's really what I envisioned, Jesse, in establishing the governance uh, over the security function. I think you're, you're right on, and it does consist of multiple entities. So it's not just IT, and it's not just information security but it's physical security as well. And then also um, representatives from transmission distribution, from customer service, and then from business resiliency or business continuity planning as well. And so it's important that governance or steering committee is there to ensure that all of the you know, business requirements for a secure smart grid ecosystem are in place, being managed effectively and appropriately. Thanks.